Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zach for All Things Wild, and on this excursion, we are at the Fossil Discovery Center of Madera County in Chowchilla, California. Now, this building houses fossils that have been found right over yonder at the Fairmead Landfill. In 1993, as excavation began for a new section of the landfill, fossils began popping up and paleontologists went crazy. It was the same year as Jurassic Park came out, so <laughs> let's go see what we can find, shall we? Dwayne Furman and I'd like to welcome you to the Fossil Discovery Center. Today, during your visit, we will be taking you back in time to Fairmead, California, 700,000 years ago. The Fairmead story for us really begins in May of 1993. That's when a heavy equipment operator working at the Fairmead landfill saw something unusual in the soil. The Board of Supervisors realized from the beginning their obligation to preserve these fossils as natural resources on behalf of the people of California. We have a special fossil resource center here in Madera County. We're proud to share it with everyone. The largest mammals found during Pleistocene era Central California were Columbia mammoths. This fella was 14 feet tall. That is almost 14 noise. And they were impressive, sporting 10 to 15 foot long tusks, larger than the more familiar woolly mammoth. These big guys relied on the waving grass that used to cover the valley floor here. I want to touch. Ooh. I can touch, I can touch, but carefully. Scapula of a horse here. Horses of the Pleistocene were a little bit smaller than their modern day cousins. And about 12,000 years ago, they went extinct in North America, but they did survive in Europe and Asia. This skull belonged to Smilodon fatalis, one of the largest species of saber-toothed cats ever to live, and one of the more common predators found in the Pleistocene, California, next to the dire wolf. And, coincidentally, that is the state fossil of California. And right next to Smilodon is the largest predator of Pleistocene Ice Age North America, the short-faced bear standing some 15 feet tall on its hind legs and weighing up to 15,000 pounds. It was estimated to be able to run at a clip of 40 miles an hour. That's almost enough to run down a horse. Another example of Smilodon, and it's a little harder to imagine, but if you throw flesh and muscle and fur on that guy, he looks pretty ferocious, ready to take down his multitude of prey animals, able to chase down horses and camels and other large herbivores, even the Colombian mammoth, although Smilodon would have a pretty tough challenge against a, against a big old Colombian mammoth. This guy behind me is a Harlan's ground sloth. Like modern sloths that are much smaller and dwell in the trees, Harlan's ground sloth was an herbivore feeding on leaves of trees, but he was able to rear up on his hind legs and use those impressive claws to take down branches and pull them to himself so that he could feast on the luscious leaves. This gives you an idea of just how big the short-faced bear was. Look at those jaws. Look at the jaws. 
Short faced bears had enough pressure in their jaws to crack through the bones of their Pleistocene prey. And it was believed. Uh oh. We have a little bit of an emergency. While mom tends to the um, regurgitation issue. <laughs> The short-faced bear was believed to be far more predatory than its modern counterparts. With its speed and its strength, it is believed that it was more, much more of an active hunter, although it was likely very opportunistic as well and would often compete for um, kills with dire wolves and Smilodon and would bully its way to a free meal. Shame on you being a bully. Big bully. And that is the most common fossil found at the Fairmead site. 61% of the fossils pulled out of the ground are the Pleistocene horse. And it is believed that they looked very much like the Shavalsky's horse of the Eurasian steppes with that orangish, reddish, brownish coloration. Very similar in size. For fans of the world of Westeros in the Game of Thrones universe that is the real life dire wolf. A pack hunter larger than its gray wolf descendants able to take down large prey from the camelops all the way up to the Columbian mammoth if it really wanted to. Although that was very very unlikely unless it was young or very very sick or wounded individual. So one thing that the Fairmead site has in common with its much more famous Rancho La Brea site, home of the La Brea tar pits, is animals were attracted here because of water. And this is a recreation of what a Pleistocene water source would look like. Now water in a dry grassland was a very valuable resource. The water would bring in the herbivores, so your horses, llamas, camels, pronghorn antelope, Columbia mammoth, um, in other parts, mastodons, uh, ground sloths, and wherever the herbivores go, the carnivores follow. So you get your herbivores coming, they will be followed by the smilodon, the dire wolf, short-faced bear, and they would eventually die, <laughs> and their bones become fossilized and later recovered for research and display, such as they are back there in the Fossil Discovery Center. Well, we are gonna wrap things up here at the Fossil Discovery Center. It was a blast. Not a huge museum, say like uh, Rancho La Brea and the Tar Pits would be, but well worth the visit if you wanna come out here just along Southbound Highway 99. It's a great experience. The gals in there are super friendly. Um, be sure to check the links in the description for more information about the Fossil Discovery Center um, and how to follow us on Facebook. As always, this is Zach. Lizzie and Nora. Have a wild day, everyone.